I demonstrated a, a short while back um, one of the new wall features in Bobstrack Builder that allows you to quickly and easily create walls that go over terrain. Um, I've been working on that code a little bit since then and um, one of the things that I think people will find useful is um, the ability to change this shape along the length of the wall. I'll just drive down and look at our wall here. Um, what I'm going to do is add a, a shape here. We'll tell it to, to change the shape and we'll just move this out and fatten the wall a bit. You can see there as it's getting to that point it um, it blends from the previous shape into the new shape and continues that new shape for the rest of the length. Um, so that's going to be useful in itself for creating different and um, weird designs, whatever you want to do with that. It can be used for doing buildings. You can... can I, I don't really think it's the ideal way, but you could use it to cap the end of the walls off by um, adding one very close to each other and and bringing these top points right down. Um, <coughs> I, I've done that um, in my current Eastern Creek track, but um, it's not what I consider an ideal solution. There will be a better way of doing um, wall ends in the future. Um, so that's um, that's part of the, the change that I've recently coded in. Um, another change is the ability for this particular shape that we're, that we're moving is um, to change the material that it uses. So if I just create another one in here and tell it to set the material, come back to this one, tell it to set the material, and um, say we select, um, let's uncheck that and grab a ripple and just stick the ripple on there. You can see that it changes uh, material at that point there, continues that along here. Um, so you can move them along and stretch it, move it back and forth. Um, that too, with the shape on it as well. Um, so you could go back to this one, change the shape, and and move that shape back in, so it looks more like a wall. Um, so it's quite useful, and of course, all of that is still node driven, so you can make adjustments, and it will still. Um, go up the, the terrain and sit on the terrain. Um, so pretty good features that'll be very useful for putting advertising on your walls um, without having to redo the whole wall. You can just add a couple of surfaces, add the advertising and away you go. Um, some other features that I've added, um, I'll just r remove this wall and um, create a, a new one. Yeah. <coughs> Um, and I'll remove the bottom two points, go to the materials, remove the couple that got mapped back there, grab our ripple, and change it to a ripple. Um, <coughs> we'll go back to our shape, because at the moment this is sitting above the road. And um, we'll grab both of those points them down here. Um, two things you're going to notice, um, two settings here that I've got and they're really quickly hacked up. Um, one allows you to change the, the randomness so you can add half a meter's randomness um, to it um, which changes as I move this shape so it um, gets new values. Um, this is obviously exaggerated. If you wanted to build a wall and add a little bit of randomness to it, um, you can make it 10 centimeters worth of randomness, and it's a much more subtle effect. Um, that randomness will occur on each of these points here. Um, so as I move that out, you can see it sort of jiggle about to, to new random settings. Um, Aside from that, you've also got this grounded option. Um, the, there is a new wall property which is rest on ground, which is what um, it's defaulting to here, and that allows the shape at the uh, origin here, at the center, uh, to be calculated and sat on the ground. So 
for this particular shape that sort of sits about there, it calculates it and it moves all these points um, to sit on the ground. Additionally, you can also tell individual points to be grounded or not. Um, so this is going to sit exactly um, above the ground regardless of whether the origin's grounded or not. And I'll just um, uncheck this so you can see that um, what I'm talking about rather than me trying to explain it in a lame way. Um, these points are still rough interface, I need to adjust these a bit so they sit above the ground. Um, and now if I actually zoom in and bring that down to a reasonable level um, I'll move that up. actually it'll probably work better over the terrain move this up a bit um, you'll see now that the bottom point actually rests on the terrain but the top point rather than going up and down with the terrain as well, as well um, is um, sorry, once I uncheck that, um, is going to sit um, above things as well. I better do a better shape here so you can see what's going on. So we sit that around about on the ground, sit this above the ground, we'll remove its randomness at the moment, and we'll come back here, <coughs> um, flag this one as being grounded. There, that finally demonstrates what I'm trying to get at. Um, so the top part of your fence um, will remain straight from that point to that point regardless of the terrain underneath, whereas your bottom point will always sit on the ground, um, which is important when your texture has shading near the ground, where your wall texture has shading near the ground. You want that to sit nicely on the ground rather than through the terrain. Um, so this does it this sort of setting does it that effect a lot better. Um, hopefully you'll get the chance to play with that in the, the next major release. Um, it's still a while off yet. Um, there's much, much more features that I'm adding in. And that's it for now.